if I kind of slip and then slip to this side, you know, a lot of people come. Walk back. Well, here, I can just come this way to the back. The fight's pretty much over from here, right? Obviously, tons of striking potential. Burnett from Green Dragon Tai Chi and Qigong here with Kyle Haido once again from North Coast BJJ. Um, how's it going this morning? It's going good, man. Going good. I'm excellent. excited. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> so we were talking about uh, taking the back, how dangerous it is to have somebody behind you in any martial art, mm -hmm. whether you're standing or on the ground. And so maybe we can look at a couple situations of how you can get to the back. Certainly. And we can start from there and go forward. Sounds good. Let's do it. So one way I know uh, for sure is the arm drag. I know you like the arm drag. Love it. So it can come from grappling most times. It's really hard to get from like a strike or punch, but maybe I'm trying to grab Kyle or uh, you can arm drag me. Sure. So, uh, yeah, so any, anytime I'm trying to take the back, right, again, it can be a little hard from a pure striking sense. Maybe you slip a punch or something like that. But if we're grappling, right, anytime we're looking to arm drag, we like to control one side, right? You gotta control the arm you're gonna drag, obviously. We usually start with the same side grip and then reach across to the tricep. There's a lot of variations. Some guys go across and then same side. If he's got a sleeve, I can grab that. But in general, we like to start controlling same side and then reach across big to the tricep. Once I've got my hands in place, it's two pieces. It's a big pull, but also a big step, right? I'd love to just pull this guy all the way past me, but if he's super big and strong, I might not be able to do that. So I pull him as much as I can, and I also like to step past the bad guy, right? Once we step, then again, we can circle to the back and sort of hit whatever takedown we're looking for, over the arm, under the arms, kind of up to you from there. But again, we generally go same side control, reach across, and then two pieces. A big pull, but also a big step. Lots of people, when they drag, they think it's all drag with the arms, right? But if you're super strong and I can't move this guy, I can also move me, right? So I can think about it as two pieces, the pull and the step. And the energy of me resisting actually helps you absolutely. in your step to Certainly. get around behind. Good. For sure. How about duck unders? Have you done duck unders? I have. I like duck unders again. Sometimes it's seen in sort of more of a wrestling context, yeah, but I don't think it necessarily has to be. Anytime you've got inside ties on a person, right? So we're all about inside control in jujitsu. I always prefer to be this guy versus you being on the inside of my arms, right? I think if I'm on the inside, I've kind of got my hands on the steering wheel. I think this is a super realistic self-defense situation, right? Whether we're trying to calm a guy down, maybe I checked a couple punches. Anytime I'm on the inside here, a simple lift and level change gives me a wide open path to the back. Again, it's sort of two pieces. It's a little bit of a pull, but also a step forward, right? I always want to be moving you and me, right? Just to make up for any sort of size discrepancy. Anytime we duck under, especially in grappling, it's super important that I'm very cognizant of my head, right? When I duck under the arm, I need to make sure my head is up and pressuring. Sometimes people make the mistake of hitting a duck under with their head low. And if I do that, all I'm effectively doing is stepping into a guillotine, right? Yeah, you can wrap my neck. And I've got a big problem, right? So anytime I'm on the inside, a duck under is available as long as I lift and level change. And then on my way through, I always look up, up, up with my eyes, right? Your eyes kind of guide the way. I'm trying to look at the back of your head. Now if my head is up and you try and wrap me for a guillotine, it's much harder, right? The angle is much weirder. I'm not gonna stay here long either, right? But if there's a moment where I'm here and my head is up and in, I should be nice and safe. And then same deal, I'm just gonna take a little quarter step to the back. I'm glad you mentioned the head because it kind of counteracts one of the moves that I was thinking about in, uh, in our Tai Chi, in our mm -hmm. chin style. If I show you the move, um, it's, um, it actually comes after, let me show you the first move. So sure. if you were to maybe punch with a right, sure. if I catch this down and coil, it's a, a strike here. Uh -huh. And then after that, one of the things I can do is come around the neck and turn you into this knee. Certainly. So by bringing you in like that, but I was thinking one of the things, if somebody's doing a duck under and if they don't have the neck active, mm -hmm. so if you do your duck under incorrectly, I can still drop the elbow and bring the knee right up Absolutely. into the face. Mm -hmm. So it's very good that you mentioned having Certainly. that. Yeah, anytime I'm shooting, ducking underneath anything, we always want our head up, right? That's kind of wrestling 101, but self-defense as well. If a guy can wrap and choke, knee me in the face, I never want to be looking at the floor. Nice. Let's talk a little bit about just something you could do if somebody does get behind you. So if someone gets behind me? Um, actually, if you're behind me, a takedown that you could do, like some of the sure. dangers. Well, actually, let me let me uh, maybe arm drag you first. Sure. Um, you were, we were mentioning chokes just a second ago, mm -hmm. so 
if I can get Kyle, one of the ways I like to arm drag is circling and passing it over. Mm -hmm. And then as I step, I don't have to go to the waist. I can come right to the neck. And from here, you can get different types of grips. Certainly. Yeah. And choking. So it's pretty dangerous. It's very dangerous. Yeah, we right. never we never want a guy behind us, right? Because mm -hmm. again, he can choke very effectively. If we're up on the feet, he's got a ton of ability to lift and slam, right? Obviously, in wrestling, you see big, crazy suplexes. But if I'm not worried about a guy doing that. A big lift and just drop down to the floor. I was going to say, that's one of my dangerous. favorite things. If I can get behind yeah, yeah. a person. Certainly, yeah. certainly. No, it's a big issue, right? Because again, all of my stuff is sort of pointed away, and all of your stuff is pointed at me. I've got very little ability to grab you, strike you, do anything, right? Again, guys think they can throw crazy elbows from behind, and maybe, right? But I think that's going to be kind of like winning the lottery if you can make that. Yeah, because somebody savvy is going to, they're going to be behind their head. head. Yeah. Exactly. So another thing that we do with the uh, arm drag, just step over a second. This yeah, way. Yeah, yeah is um, maybe we're grappling, like uh, Kyle said, uh, having the inside control is important. I don't always have to circle at the wrist. Even if I catch the forearm, I can try to pass it over. And then once I come behind, wrapping, uh, let's turn this way a little bit. So I can do either gable grip um, and start to kick the leg, breaking his posture back. Now there are, I know Kyle can get out of this. There are certain escapes, but not everyone's gonna know him. And it's still a bad position to get put into. Yeah, horrible position for me, for sure. Yeah, so anytime, you're on the, you know, person behind you, it's just bad news. Bad right? news, yeah, never want to expose your back. Okay, so let's say you get behind me, sure. in the grappling context. Uh-huh, just like a takedown? Yeah, sure. Sure, so anytime we get behind, right, we've got a couple main takedowns. Um, the, the big step in and lift is always a good option, right? But I think that one is a little more weight class dependent, right? If you get someone who's really big and heavy, or maybe you've been fighting a while and you're pretty tired, a big step and lift might be hard to do. Now. If you can get a guy's feet off the floor and give him a little tap and return him to the mat, that's a great option, absolutely, right? But some things that are a little bit more energy efficient, right, that I like to try and do are sit downs, right? There's sort of two, two sit downs in Jiu Jitsu. Well, there's a bunch of them, but there's two that we focus on in here. There's sort of a super basic version and then one that's a little bit fancier. And real quick, I'll talk about both. So the first basic one is I'm not gonna do anything fancy with my feet, really. All I'm gonna think about doing is sitting Chris down in sort of an imaginary chair. So we wanna take like a step or two forward in the frame here, right? If my hands are locked, all I'm gonna think about doing is creating a little bit of space in between our hips, right? If I stay super tight and sit him down, all I'm gonna do is sit him on top of me and I don't want that. So I create a little vacuum for his hips and then almost like I'm spiking a medicine ball at the gym, right, CrossFit style. I'm basically gonna spike his hips down to the floor as I backpedal with my feet. I wanna make his hips heavy, give him nothing to sit in, and just backpedal nice and easy. So I drop and walk back, boom. Now once his hips hit the floor, again from here we got a lot of different options. We can come up to the neck right away. Maybe we're just trying to get away from this person. We can bail, we can lock our seatbelt, put our hooks in, do all sorts of different things. But that's sort of a basic sit down. And again, I'm very vulnerable because I can't see you, but you can see it, exactly. everything that I do. Exactly, yeah, if we start controlling wrists, right, very susceptible to strikes. Again, tons of choking potential from back here. Not a great place to be for Chris, but if we're in a self-defense situation, right, if we're this guy, we're definitely in the driver's seat, for sure. Nice. And you want me to do the fancy sit? Right. Yeah, yeah that's, that's one I like to use a lot. Cool, so yeah, one more, right? So this one's a little bit fancier. Same concept, uh, but the mechanic is a little bit different, right? So my hands are locked. This time, that instead of being directly behind Chris, I'm gonna be a little bit of an angle. Let's step one time this way. When I get to this angle, now look, I'm no longer behind Chris, right? I'm basically gonna think about doing the same thing sitting him in that imaginary chair, but there's a lot less risk of him landing on me. And I think this one's a little bit stronger, right? Maybe I tried to spike his hips and he didn't go down. So I can improve my angle to the side. And now I'm gonna sit just like before, but I'm also gonna do a little bit of a stretch with my back leg. When we stretch with our back leg for this takedown, we're not thinking about tripping this guy or kicking this guy's legs out or anything like that. All I'm thinking about doing is extending my leg back behind me and sitting my hips to the floor. As I do, I like to try and make sure we don't land on my arm, so it's easy for me to finish in the top position. So nice and easy, my back leg stretches, and I just sit. Now, when we land for that one, we're not always gonna be directly behind the guy on the back in necessarily a seatbelt position, but we can certainly work there, right? If you land on your side, your back is exposed, so we can absolutely work our way to the back, but if nothing else, we're gonna be on top. Yeah, and even still, it was dangerous because you were able to get to my back 
So I actually like to incorporate the arm drag into that. Yep, I like that a lot. And then do that too. For sure, great sequence. Yeah. All right, so let's think about on the ground, just um, maybe he's already taken me down and mm -hmm. he's done some things. Or maybe I landed in that position, but however he got to the back position, I'll have you come on top and you can sure. show how vulnerable I am with the hips heavy and, and sure. like strikes to the sure. head, things like that. So in jujitsu, right, sort of the ultimate position is having somebody's back. Anytime we're grappling, this is always where we're trying to get, especially when we have new guys that come in that have never rolled before. Basically, we say your goal in jujitsu is to get behind them, right? Without knowing too much, if you're working to get behind the person, you're doing something right. Right? Once we get back there though, um, the fight isn't over. This person is very mobile if he's on all his hands and his knees. Right now, again, this isn't an ideal position for Chris by any means, but he's certainly not broken down. Right? Someone that's super explosive and strong can stand up from here, they can roll like crazy from here. Lock, yes, yeah, sit out. Lots of crazy stuff can happen. Um, just because you're behind somebody doesn't mean, again, that the fight is over. So not only is our goal to get the person, get behind the person, but our goal is also to flatten the person out, right? We call this the jujitsu pin. The wrestling pin, we put the person flat on their shoulders. In jujitsu, I'm trying to put the first person flat on their belly, right? Now, when we get behind people to flatten someone out, it's easiest with hooks with our feet, right? It looks a little funny, we're not gonna be riding our opponent like a cowboy here, but just to make it, just to illustrate, right? I want hooks with my feet. I'm not crisscrossing my feet underneath. I'm not trying to squeeze the air out of Chris. I'm just biting a little bit with my hamstrings here. Now my hands can go a couple different places. I can go underneath Chris's armpits, or I can make a seatbelt here, stay up real quick. Yep. Or I can make a seatbelt with my arms, right? Boom, one, two. Whichever one I do though, I immediately want to start flattening this person out. Again, I don't want this person to start to come up and give me all sorts of problems. So when we flatten people, I like to hook in the armpits. And then rather than thinking about stretching Chris out long, I want to think about making my hips super heavy. I want to push straight down to the floor. So I go underneath with the armpits, I engage my hips, and I push my hips down to the mat to flatten this person all the way out. The heavier my hips are and the more pressure I have, the harder it's going to be for this guy to regain his base underneath them, and the easier it's going to be for me to finish this person. As you can see, if you do a good job with your hips and you can keep this person flat, the fight's pretty much over from here, right? Obviously, tons of striking potential if we were in a super scary situation, right? We can attack the neck, we can do whatever we're trying to do, or we can even just keep this person flat. But this is sort of the ultimate position in jiu-jitsu that we're always trying to get to. I've got both hooks, he's belly down, and I'm hunting for my Mataleo, right? That's about, again, as sort of mechanically broken as you can get, as helpless as the person on bottom can get, um, and as sort of powerful as the person on top can get, just from a potential standpoint. I can strike you without any resistance, choke you with very little, and you can do basically nothing back to me. Nice. People teach uh, striking, things like that. We were talking about going away from the power hand, which I think is really good uh, if you don't want to get knocked out, right? Of course. <laughs> but there are some movements where you actually go, even in boxing, I think, if you throw like a one-two, uh -huh. if I kind of slip and then slip to this side, you know, a lot of people come in and rip that, sure. that uh, liver shot, things mm -hmm. like that. I'm gonna use, in Tai Chi, we call a ward off. Okay. So if you, I'm gonna parry first. Sure. And then I'm gonna use my feet to ward off. So if you throw like a one, two, uh -huh. I'll parry here, and then see how this kind of wards off. Notice I come close to his elbow tricep area. I don't want to be here, because Kyle can easily fold that into an elbow right sure. into my face, right? Also, another good thing about it, let's do one more uh -huh. here. Another good thing about it too, the deeper I get, the more I can start to control his posture just with the shape of my arm. Mm -hmm. So this is another way that you can actually get to the back of one more time. Yep. Go from here. I don't have to go straight to the back. I can come across the neck here mm -hmm. and start to look for trips, different things like that. Or one more time yep. here, I can just come this way to the back and start wrapping up different things like mm -hmm. that. So just sure. a way to enter, just uh, using the footwork. And notice I'm not stepping to the side, I'm kind of angling a little bit yep. forward. So one more time sure. yep. here. Come here, boom. I can also strike to the head and then maybe think about going to the back. Mm -hmm. Of course, my opponent is not going to stand still for sure. that. You may have a little bit, but the, the more you can connect, I think, on that, yeah. the more you can connect here, I come across and, and maybe get a lock here and then start transitioning. Then you have the options for the takedowns and things like that. Absolutely. We always say if you can see the back, you can take the back, right? Right. So if I throw that one too and you do that thing one more time, oh. right? Here, look, you can see my back. Yeah, right? it's, it's there. So you can start to take it. Yeah. Again, it's gonna be a live situation, but if you can see it, you can take it, right? So anytime you can do those parries and start to step to that angle, you've got an alligator in the back for sure. Mm -hmm. 
And just an honorable mention too, there's also legs that you can grab from the back as well. Yeah. Like if I'm, one more time, even on that one, yeah. if I'm here and I'm coming across, I can Certainly. start to pick up the leg, different things like that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thanks. I'm looking forward to class today. Me thanks too, I'm excited. For another video. For sure, anytime. All right. Nice.